Just as a wee thing before we get started in this video, there will be heavy spoilers for the game coming up in the video, right? right? So you've been warned. Welcome one and all to the Half-Life Episode 1 and Episode 2 review video. I was going to split these up, but I decided, nah, just smash it into the one video, you know? Much better idea, I think. Did that for all the other DLCs I've ever reviewed, so here we are. Welcome on in. Tell me, Dr. Freeman, if you can. You have destroyed so much. What is it exactly that you have created? Can you name even one thing? I thought not. So I'll try to keep this shit to a minimum, but yeah, but no, I might ramble on like a fucking idiot like I normally do. So, Half-Life 2, Episode 1, was the first of three promised expansion packs, of which we only received two. Because Valve can't count to three. How many Left for Dead? Two. How many Half-Life? Two. How many Half-Life add-on packs? Two. How many portals? Two. They can't count to three. Unless it involves like three billion or something like that, something stupid. But never mind. We'll never get a Half-Life 3, that's just the way shit goes. So, episode one. It really is the shortest of the two. It was, it was quite disappointing. Even back when it came out, it was um, deemed incredibly short. A few hours and it was over. Maybe even less than that. Because I managed to finish the entire campaign of episode one whilst getting information and uh, footage for this video. So, tells you this a little bit on the short side. Now, I'd normally be upset at that, or like, oh, it's not so good. It isn't so good, but it's part of a pack. So I'd never played it when it first came out. I got the orange box for the Xbox 360, which had Half-Life 2, Half-Life 2 Episode 1, Half-Life 2 Episode 2, Team Fortress. Never played that. Team Fortress 2. Didn't give a fuck about that. And uh, Portal. Good old Portal, eh? It's a, it's a nice wee slice of, of uh, extra content, shall we say. It's like, I don't know why it was so short. Other than maybe they wanted to pump it more than two episodes of greatness, but people moan like fuck, so it get changed. And then they made the second episode longer. And then they never made any more after that, so... Yeah, the whole episodic video game thing, they've tried it umpteen times. Don't work. Shite. Nine times out of ten, I mean, I'll download the first episode because it's free. And it's like, yeah, I like that. You gonna get the other episodes? I wouldn't saw it. <laughs> fucking fucking you fucking dicks. Anyway, anyway, back to the topic at hand, shall we? See? Aye, so episode one, it doesn't really introduce any new enemies. There's a couple, but nothing. <laughs> nothing special. There's a zombie. <gasps> A zombine, which is just a head crab combine. Yes. What the hell is that? Hmm. A combine zombie. That's that's like a a, a zombine, right? <laughs> zombine, get it? <laughs> okay. 
and then there's a there's a there's a bit where you have to fucking ferry people to and from like a spot and it's no no that's not it an escort mission's just not what we were looking for it takes up about 15 20 minutes and then you go back and forward back and forward back and forward well, that's a great way to pad out the, the, the experience isn't it no it's shite fucking utter utter yak urine pish jobby farts and then you fucking you have a wee strider fight which is pretty cool I like the strider fight and then it's over like like I said it's it's, it's pretty good it's good in the fact that from my point of view it's just an extension of Half-Life 2 but if you'd already played Half-Life 2 and then you wanted something extra and it's no, this is no it. But you know you're always gonna get this now. It's it's part of the main orange box experience. What you say is a as a fucking good time. Alright, so enjoy. Um if you play this or if not. Not really much more to say unfortunately. Well there's a stupid achievement in the Xbox version called the One Free Bullet. And there's a bit where you have to use a shotgun to escape from like a, a padlock and chain, you know that the devious padlock and chain. Ho oh, ho I know it's scary. Contain yourself. But then you have to use like grenades and the crowbar and the gravity gun and the rest of the I actually managed to do that. I thought it was gonna be fucking hard though, but it was quite easy. Anyway, we'll move we'll move on to episode two, shall we? <laughs> Now we're going to have a look at episode 2, Half-Life 2, episode 2. Right, 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 episode 2, Half-Life 2, I'm now just going to call it that for now on, that's it. Absolutely doofed. Doofed in the bum cheeks. It's a considerably longer affair than the fucking first one, but... Still quite short, but a hell of a lot more fun, I think, and it introduces a new enemy type that I hate. I don't know the name of. That's good. But they take a fucking pasting. They're kind of like a cross between a combine and the antlion queen thingies that, that you saw. Or maybe you didn't see them. Who knows. But there's a lot of shit going on. And there's emotional scenes. And... Yeah, and I'm actually going to talk a wee bit about uh, Half-Life Alex at the end of all this. Because I have issues with the story. Mm-hmm. I was going to do a fanfic, believe it or not, but now that I've seen what's become of the story, it's like... No. No, 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 no. Okay? No. No! So a wee sneak peek at what I actually think of that story. Uh, should have hired me, Valve, you yeah, fucking numpties. Even though he didn't know I exist, but no fucking, that's not the point. You have to have 2020 foresight and 2020 hindsight, otherwise you're just... Pissing into the wind, shall we say. <laughs> I don't know what I'm talking about. Anyway, Half-Life 2, Episode 2. It's a good game, folks. It's quite varied in its um, locales. and It's it's got the, the zombines in it for Episode 1. And it's got these... I don't know what they are again, but they're, they're really fucking annoying. And they fire these like, explodes, explosive projectiles at you. But the good thing is, you can use your gravity gun. Catch them on a wee object and fire them fucking back. Because there's a delay in the explosion. Yes, you get to see the Combine as they are in their oh, inspiring audacity. They're fucking, they're basically telekinetic grubs. 
and they could put me backpacks on to give them arms. Yeah. I, I mean, as sinister as that might look, and you might think it looks sinister, it's kind of comical and scary at the same time because these things are. Well, let's just say they're not very pleasant when you get up close. They can bombard you with. What do you call it? Telekinetic attacks. Yes. So quite early on in the story of this, Alex gets damaged by one of these. I don't know what they are, but she gets she gets doofed. Doctor Freeman. I realize this moment may not be the most convenient for a heart to heart, but I had to wait until your friends or otherwise occupied. Mm. There was a time they cared nothing for Miss Vance, when their only experience of humanity was a crowbar coming at them down a steel corridor. When I plucked her from Black Mesa, I acted in the face of objections that she was a mere child and of no practical use to anyone. I have learned to ignore such naysayers when quelling them was out of the question. Still, I am not one to squander my investments. And I remain confident she was worth far more than the initial appraisal. That's why I must now extract from you some small repayment owed for your own survival. See her safely to White Forest, Dr. Freeman. I wish I could do more than keep an eye on you. But I have agreed to abide by certain restrictions. Well, now listen carefully, my dear. When you see your father, relay these words. Prepare for unforeseen consequences. Then a Vortigaunt shows up and is like, Oh, Alex Vance has been hurt. We must help her. Then he calls out the, the call of the wild, the song of his people. And then he takes her underground and they start, start to heal her. And then you've got a quest, an underground quest, which really isn't interesting because you're in a mine for at least maybe 45 minutes. But you do get to kill many grubs of many combines. And there's hundreds of them and they're quite satisfying to squish. And when you do squish them, you will get life back. I've also tweaked the old uh, physics in this. I've added some more bendy bits in the bridges. You'll see it. Things uh, things bend and tilt. And This game is just so addictive to play. I, I, I just had a blast playing through these, these three. I didn't finish Half-Life 2 right enough. I got very close, but I couldn't be arsed in the end. And then it's just... Uh, Getting that shotgun and getting that head shot with the um, the old power blast, the alternate fire on a shotgun, and you kill your zombie and its heat falls off. So that's annoying when you kill the body and the heat just jumps at you. And you're like, fuck you, smash right in with a fucking crowbar crunch. Crowbar crunch. Very, 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 very technical, you understand. No farting about, you know, crowbar crunchy McCruncherton's. And you'll get a car in this and you'll find it and you need to do wee jumps and then they'll add things to it. It's not as interesting as the um, hovercraft in the, the second game. Or the main game, should I say. Uh, it doesn't get any guns, but it can hold bombs. Which, not all that handy really. Kind of is. But it's, it's not to the same degree. You don't get that lovely machine gun that has infinite ammunition. Oh, God, I so want that. Give me that and everything. Just give me a gun with infinite ammo and I'll kill everything. Kill everything. Make it sci fi -y. Have it like it's like a, a, a proton pack and it just regenerates through farts or something. And I'll just go... 
through every fucking army. <laughs> Actually, the biggest disappointment of this episode is the fact that there was no follow-up. Fucking hell, no follow-up. I hate you, Valve, you bunch of pricks. Stop counting your money, Gabe, whatever your fucking twatty name is. Get your double-chinned arse and make that third game. For fuck's sake, I don't know. You're not going to convince him by doing things like insulting him. Like, I'm joking, okay? But see if he'd have made the third game 13 years ago. Well, maybe 10 years ago. This wouldn't be an issue. We'd be, we'd be happily having a, a Half-Life trilogy with a couple of episodes here and there. It's the fact that it ends on a stupid fucking cliffhanger. And then they don't follow up. For no reason! It's not as if it wasn't popular! Half-Life's massively popular! Where's the third game, Gabe? Oh, I, well... Well, what happened was... Is that, um, we went from a game developer to being a money bean counter. And I just sit and I thumb through my dollars every fucking day. I don't have time to be making quality video games. Well, what about Half-Life Alex? Uh, but you see, the problem with Half-Life Alex is nobody fucking bought it. Do you know why that is? Oh, do tell me, smart earth. Because you put it in a proprietary fucking headset, a VR headset, that needed like a $900 PC, £1,000 PC, whatever, to run. Cost about 800 quid in its own. And it was fucking VR. Fucking VR! Look, I don't care what anyone says, right? Here's my honest opinion in VR. It is shite. Okay? It is fucking shite. I've played tons of VR games on my PS4 Pro. And the vast majority of them are forgetful, throwaway, pure ploppy pish. Pure fucking fish lips jobby. It's fucking crap. It's a shite gimmick they try to bring in in the 90s. Wasn't it ready then? And now all the games have to be first person. And you have to have, like, fucking Hugh Hefner's mansion to properly enjoy them. Otherwise the thing doesn't fucking know where you are in the room. And you end up pointing a gun at your own face. Fuck VR. Make a normal game. Just make a normal fucking game. This shouldn't be fucking rocket science to these cunts. I think they just do it deliberately so they go, well, it didn't fucking sell, so we don't make it anymore. Fuck you. You're like, well, maybe if you made it into a normal game where normal people could play it at a budget price, it would fucking sell, but <laughs> here you go, eh? They'll port it to the PS4, watch this, and it'll be fucking shite. I've seen plenty of fucking ports. Not good. Arizona Sunshine, that's one of them. Fucking game looks like it's made of clay. <sighs> Fuck me, uh, sorry. I went in a bit of a tirade there, didn't I? Did you see that? Did you enjoy it? Did it turn you on? Did it make you mind? Oh my god! Oh Conclusion: You have Half-Life 2, Half-Life 2 Episode 1, Half-Life 2 Episode 2, a fantastic collection of games that was never fully realised, and that's the saddest part. Never fully realised, they left it because they couldn't be bothered anymore, and I wish they'd just admit that. Just come out and say, look, we're not making Half-Life 3, even though they really bloody well should. But they'll make it Steam only or some shite like that, and it'll only work on a fucking Apple phone. Some bollocks pish. Oh, we're only going to make it work in the Oculus Quest 2. Well, how many Oculus Quest 2s were sold? About 2,000. This isn't going to sell and we can't see it coming. Fucking hell, man. Anyway, let's talk about Half-Life, Alex. Right, I was... I, I, I can't come up with my own fucking stories for Half-Life because, they, well, certain people that own it won't finish it, so I need to do something to satisfy that urge, okay? And I've come across a revelation with the story. The, the, the game is set five years before Half-Life 2 
cool. You can jam with that. It's a prequel sequel. It's a wee in between -y. Fills a wee gap just to, you know, whet the appetite for more. <laughs> Don't fucking think so. Not very bloody likely. And then you find out that they're going to fight this fucking. They're going to go find a super weapon. But it's not a super weapon, it's a prison. Oh, I would think Gordon Freeman must be in that prison. Cool. Could be, you never know. So they hop, skip my jump over the prison, crash it to the ground because it's floating for some reason. How they get, I don't know how they get up there and play the game, I just watched the ending. And then they're like, oh, it's no Gordon Freeman in that prison, it's G Man. I'm like, so the combine managed to capture G Man, okay. Okay, let's, um, with some stupid highfalutin fucking sci fi nonsense explanation. Don't really care, actually. And then. G-Man's like to Alex, oh well done, you got here, smashing, great. I'm a genie, here's one wish. And she's like, get rid of the combat, and he's like, no. I was like, okay. Why not? Because it goes against my employer, so there's another base of fucking faceless wanks behind him. We don't even know who he is, probably. He's like, well, well I've come to the conclusion that G-Man is basically Q from Star Trek. There you go. Solved, mystery solved. He's some sort of pan-dimensional being that can jump and fart and fucking do all kinds of stupid things even though he sounds like a absolute wanky turd and he dresses like a fucking grand. Anyway. So like, oh, I'll give you something you don't know you want and I'm thinking, oh Christ, what is it? And it's like, oh, your dad dies in the future. So if you take my offer you can I can uh, kill this beast and save your dad. So she does that and she saves Eli's life. And uh, we were looking for a replacement for Gordon Freeman. And I'm like, hold on a minute. You were looking for a replacement for Gordon Freeman? Bear in mind this is five years before Half-Life 2. They're like, oh, we haven't been satisfied with him. How no, he's been in stasis. He still fucking is. We haven't been satisfied, but we wanted to find a replacement for ages, so... And now we've found that replacement a new Alex. And she's like, aye, okay, whatever. So, wh why does G-Man then go ahead and let Gordon Freeman free? Is it some sort of fucking... Double point, double game, mind game conspiracy fucking... Playing sides off each other. But no, because you get back to the, the, the point in Half-Life 2, Episode 2... Where Al uh, Eli's died, and he's no deed now. But Alex has disappeared because the G-Man's fucking whipped her into some sort of fucking stasis like Gordon was. And Eli's like, we're gonna go kill the G-Man. And I'm like, wait a fucking minute, this story is now fucked. Makes no sense. Never play with time travel, kids, because you just end up making a cunt of it. And thereby making a cunt of yourself. So Gordon Freeman was that shite that they went and released him anyway to carry out his mission, which he fucking successfully carried out. Even though I don't really know what the G-Man wanted him to do. He's just like, here, get off this train and fuck about. You know, you may be less disappointed in your employees if you actually tell them what you want them to do. Rather than thinking they're all fucking mind readers, you fucking smarmy, specky cunt. Anyway, this concludes my broadcast day, people. Good night and tight sleep jobby, some fuck I don't know. Bye! <laughs>